Open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Luke, chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He hath sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. He hath sent me to preach recovering of sight to the blind. He hath sent me to preach and set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say, now this simply means he preached a message on this scripture. Now we can prove by the Bible that he preached, he took this text and preached it everywhere he went. And we'll see that later on. Now, it's just simple as this. It's same today. If you believed what he said, if you believed that he's anointed, then the anointing would flow. If you didn't, you didn't get anything. And I, he's proven this right here where he's preaching there in Nazareth. This is going to be proved out. Right here. Now watch this. He preached this message. <clears throat> All bear him witness and wondered at the gracious word. He's preaching the blessing. He's preaching the grace of God. God loves you and I love you. And he's here to heal you and deliver you. And they're saying, what is he talking about? He was, he, he was raised right here. <laughs> that proceeded out of his mouth and they said, is this not Joseph's son? No, it wasn't. And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, which was Jesus' headquarters now, and his home was where he lived, do also here in your country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet. He called himself a prophet there, which he, which he ministered most of the time. Most of the time. You hear me now? He, meant, he, he preached most of the time as a teacher. Taught, preached, and healed. Matthew 9. Now, so here he's talking about himself being a prophet. No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. None of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him under the brow of the hill whereupon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them went his way and came down to Capernaum. Passing through the midst of them, he went home. He lived in Capernaum. Had a home there, a large home. Now, they, what, okay, look in the sixth chapter of Mark. 
account of the same thing, except Mark gives us insight Praise God. Verse 5. Verse 4, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. He could there, and say wouldn't, said he couldn't. He could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Now, what is the cure for unbelief? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he went round about the villages teaching. Now, let's go over to Acts chapter 10 and we'll see this again in um, and we'll see here that he preached this everywhere he went. <clears throat> this is, uh, you know the story that, that Peter was on the housetop and he saw the sheet led down and so forth and wound up at Cornelius' house. And um, so, In verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now notice this, the word, what word? How God, what? The message Jesus preached. What he preached, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he's anointed me to preach the gospel. That word which God sent <clears throat> unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Well, what was he preaching? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now Jesus didn't heal everybody. We know that, we already read that. But he did heal. There were, there were cases and instances where the scripture said he healed them all. He healed all that need healing. In one case, he healed all that touched him in or his garment in, in other cases. But he did heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. There was not one, not one sickness or disease in existence that he didn't heal. Man, he, he ripped it to the devil, didn't he? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The anointing, say the anointing. the anointing. Praise God. Say it again. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his, the devil's burden, let, let's back up here, verse 24. Therefore saith the Lord God of hosts. Now, pay very, do you hear me here? Verily, 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 I say unto thee. <laughs> That's three verities. Every time you see the Lord of hosts, underline it in red. Who is the Lord of hosts? Jesus. What host is he talking about? The angels. In the little book of Malachi, the Lord of hosts, in that little book, 
talking about the tithe, it uses the phrase, the Lord of hosts, 21 times. 21 times. The angels are in, involved in the blessing of your and my tithe. You, are, you, need, you needed to do a better job of amen right there. Amen. David said to Goliath, I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. I'll tell you another, I told you last night, when you're preaching and you hear something, you can prove it by, by the scripture. I had the Lord say this to me, just dropped it in me. <clears throat> He said, <clears throat> when he killed the lion and killed the bear with his bare hands, he had Samson on his mind. He was believing for that anointing. Mm -hmm. O my people, the dwellers in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt, and yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction and the Lord of hosts shall stir, who? <laughs> the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian and the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and, it, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11, there, uh, chapter 11, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and his name is Jesus. A branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. We could read this. And the Spirit of the Lord shall anoint him. Glory to God. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear and the reverence of the Lord. Amen. All of those anointings are on and in us right now because it's the same spirit. He was on them, he's in us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anointing, say anointing. anointing. Praise you, Father. Gloria first heard Brother Keith teach on Genesis 6-3. The days of man. This is the only age in the Bible that God said, not three score and ten. That was a curse that came on a disobedient people. God didn't say that. They said it. And God said, what you have said has entered into my ears and nobody over 20 will get out of this desert alive. You're going to die whether you don't care if there's anything wrong with you or not. You're not getting out of here. God said 120. Well, Gloria, and, and I listened to Keith on it, and I'm, oh, it captured my attention. So Gloria is teaching healing school, and I'm sitting back behind the curtain, and she's reading that, and she read a footnote out of the, amp, the classic Amplified from the 90th uh, Psalm. And, um, and it made that statement, that it, it never was God's, plan for life. And he said, the, and, and actually, if you look it up in other translations and, and just go back to the, the Hebrew text there, he said, the normal lifespan shall be 120 years. Well, medical science without the Bible knows that this physical body, if you can keep it well, yeah. will live 120 years. They just can't figure out how to get there. Now listen to me. That's in book one. 
sixth chapter. That's pretty close to the front. Hmm. That means, now I'm going somewhere with this, where, where the anointing is concerned. From that scripture on, all the food laws are based on living 120 years. When the scripture says, with long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. It's not our prerogative to figure out what long life is. We already know 120 years. That's long life according to scripture. Well, and it just kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier on me and I won't go into all that, but I'll tell you this. He said, Kenneth, that's just as much my, my word as by my stripes you were healed. Cause we're talking about the anointing, Amen. the anointing to preach, the anointing to heal. Amen. The prosperity anointing the anointing of increase. He said, I have anointings from 80 to 90. I have anointings from 90 to 100. And he said, I have anointings from 100, and, from 100 to 110. And he said, I don't have any of them in the earth. Now, let me, let me open your eyes where now that's kind of arbitrary. But then just, I'm talking about just a couple of weeks ago and, and I'm, I'm still praying, looking at this. And here's what he showed me. He said, Kenneth, do you know anybody that's been in the ministry for 90 years? Huh? Okay. Figure it out. I've been in the ministry 52 years. I've got 38 more to go. Do the math. Boy, that hit me right between the eyes. It hit me in the heart. Somebody that's been active and strong. I'm not talking about some weak old dried up old man. <laughs> Moses is my vision man. He climbed Mount Nebo at 120 years. Glory to God. Now that boy, that listen, doesn't that doesn't that open up your your thinking and your mind? Been in the ministry for 90 years. Glory to God. And Jerry and me's just still a ripping, right along with Keith. Glory to God. Like he said, we're going to get so old, old people call us old. <laughs> anointing, say anointing. anointing. The burden removing. removing. Yoke destroying. destroying. Power, Power of the living God. After Denise and I had moved to the Soviet Union in 1991, I came back and stopped in New York City and spoke at a very small church. And I remember thinking, why am I speaking at this small church? I could have impact somewhere else that was larger. Why am I here? But I was there, so I gave it my best, went in, shared my testimony. God had a partner of KCM in that crowd. That's why I was there. And that partner listened to my testimony about what God was doing in the Soviet Union, purchased the tape, and sent it to KCM, and it got into the hands of Mary Niece, who was Gloria's mother. And when Mary listened to it, she called Gloria and said, Gloria, you've got to hear this. So Gloria listened to the tape, and the next thing I know, I received a phone call from Gloria Copeland. She said, this is Gloria Copeland, I need to meet with you and Denise. And that was our first time to come to KCM. And she said, we're going today to become your partner. And she handed us a check and began the partnership of KCM with our ministry. Kenneth was there, Gloria and Denise. And Gloria began to tell us about her dream to broadcast in the Russian language. And she had had that dream for a long time. And that day she said, can you broadcast us in the Soviet Union? And I said, yes, thinking to myself, what am I saying? I'm making such a commitment 
It's one thing to do it for yourself, but if you're going to commit for someone else, you need to, you really know what you're doing. And I said, yes. We began contracts to broadcast Believer's Voice of Victory all over. And that TV program began to reach people everywhere. It didn't take any time at all before people were quoting Kenneth and Gloria Copeland in every nook and cranny of the Soviet Union. And I can tell you today, they are known everywhere. Now, in America, we have the word of faith. If you say the word of faith in the Soviet Union, people don't know that phrase. You know why? Everybody's word of faith. They don't know that there's anything different. The, the new move of God was born in the word of faith movement, so it never had to be identified. That's all there is. When Kenneth and Gloria began teaching on television in the former Soviet Union, people were sitting in a little tiny, broken down, dilapidated apartments with dilapidated televisions. They didn't have much because they had all been raised in a communist system where everything had a, everyone had exactly the same thing. You were not allowed to have anything better than anyone else. You were not allowed to even dream. And then Kenneth and Gloria come in and begin teaching the Word of God, what we have in Christ, believer's voice of victory, and people begin to think in a new way. And if you can begin to think in a new way, it changes your life. Everyone is thinking different than they did 25 years ago. Kenneth and Gloria's teaching on prosperity has literally revolutionized the thinking of the church in Russia and the former Soviet Union. They were so uh, poverty-minded because they had been the underground church, they had never been allowed to have education, they had never been allowed to have good jobs, they didn't have a lot of possessions. But when they grabbed hold of the message which they heard preached by Kenneth and Gloria, it revolutionized their lives. And today, no one has a problem with believing God. They're all believing God for buildings and cars and the ability to preach the gospel. It is just wonderful what's happened. And I believe it's directly because of KCM. I'm grateful for every partner that supports KCM. They should never underestimate the power of their giving. When people give to KCM, their money is used wisely and it is stretched. I've watched this ministry up close. I've managed their money overseas. I've seen the way they spend money. And this ministry is very careful with their funds. And partners of KCM can rest assured that when they sell money into Kenneth Copeland Ministries, they really are sowing into good soil. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.